cannot be there where God has planned for. <laughs> but nevertheless, it will be somewhere in the in the range of or in the local. And so that's what it suggests now, inspiration is suggesting that it couldn't be the the land where the headquarters will be, but it likely be Mount Sinai, because Mount Sinai between the Medi Mount Sinai is between the Mediterranean and the Red Sea. <clears throat> All right. Between the Mediterranean and the Red Sea. According to Bible verse 45, that the king of the north will plant the tabernacles of his palace there. In Chuck 12, page 89 to 90, he says, and I read, It is self-evident that the planting is tabernacles of his palace cannot mean planting his capital. The tabernacles of the tabernacle therefore may denote a branch of his palace and is choosing to plant them in the glorious holy mountain indicates that the place is intended to attach to the tabernacles the holiness of the Christian's God. Ah, if I heard what they said, the chip don't fall far from the <clears throat> devil that is. So, to attach holiness of the Christian God, remember we are talking about the Protestant nation, the nations that come on the stage and overthrew Rome based on Protestantism. The Christianized, accept Christian Christianity. Look, look at what we are talking about. That's the nation that is now in charge. The English-speaking, Christianized, Protestant nation, the West. Yes. That's the king of the north. Or again, we look at Assyria, modern Assyria. Wherever you have modern Babylon, you must have modern Assyria. And why is that? Because if you go back in history, Babylon was poised at first, coming out of Nimrod, <coughs> Tower of Babel, to be the world power. But Babylon did not just yet became the world power because there was Assyria who moved up and pushed her aside and became the world power. God did that for a reason. He did that for the very reason to show us our time, that in our time, in the Middle Ages, we have modern Babylon, which is the papacy, was in charge, poised to rule the world, but did not so much. Or rule many people, sit on many waters, as the Bible says. Many waters mean many people, but not all. So, but that just as Babylon originally was poised from Nimrod um, to be the world power and didn't. Assyria now, modern Assyria, is this Protestant nation that um, gave backing to birth here to overthrow, to overthrow the um, Roman Empire. Having started with Martin Luther, of course. <clears throat> but we are looking on the political side. But it is the religious side that really did the underwork, the, the bunk, bulk, bunk of, bunch of the work, or the bulk of the work to overthrow. Because Protestantism, as you say that, you go right back to Martin Luther. All right? <clears throat> And having Martin Luther in the, as the 
the agitator agitate it naturally um, I hope you will reconnect I see one of my screen blocked out there um, it is Martin Luther that started it but however as a, as a result of accepting the Protestant and accepting the Christian um, doctrine as a result of accepting Christianity the nations came about as a Protestant nation England Great Britain conquered all the regimes and brought about <coughs> that let me see if I can help you I don't know what's happening to you um, That's not good. Everything seems all right there. All right. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, nothing try, nothing done. All right. A little problem there, but that's all right. Okay, so. <clears throat> This is, this is critical here. It says, it, it's setting up, uh, in other words, I, I could use it phrased a counterfeit. It is, it is really trying to set up a counterfeit. <clears throat> and we must, and those are signs, those are things that we must really pay attention to. Investing the tabernacles of his palace with such sanctity can only mean that it is to house <clears throat> and watch this now to house the headquarters of the soon coming ecclesiastical world government which we have already considered so to house what the ecclesiastical world government which is which we consider the world government as we talk about it if the West is to make an image of the beast America is to make an image of the beast <clears throat> then it's likely that that's where preparation the planting of his tabernacle in the glorious holy mountain is a preparation for that government, you remember the government we talk about that will replace this government, this world, is a government where uh, it will be the headquarters of the ecclesiastical world government. <clears throat> In other words, what inspiration is telling us? Let me um, see if I can open that. Okay disturbance from this screen. <laughs> the thing about it, um, even sometimes I want to ignore the screen, keep chipping out on me, it's just hard to see it blocking off. <laughs> and so it's a distraction, but I'm going to go on and leave it. That is to house the headquarters of the soon coming ecclesiastical world government. So you see, <clears throat> the religious system that we call the mark of the beast. So the likelihood of why uh, the West will eventually, the Bible says, we're not talking fairy tales here, we're talking reality, we're talking the word of God that will not return to him void. It is telling us that the West is preparing to put a church-like base in the promised land. And you see this, you're going to ignore the fact that God wants us to pay attention to the Middle East. <coughs> Everybody is paying attention to it, only God's people with the message <clears throat> and who claim to know the Bible and understand what the Bible is saying 
only those are dismissing the fact that Christ came to set up a kingdom. Christ came to set up a kingdom on earth, but he didn't come to set it up at that time. As we studied the lesson, the lesson shows that he came, that there was a double operation that he has that the disciples never really figured out. The double operation is that he has a kingdom to set up and he has a sacrificial work to, be, to do, but the sacrificial work was first. That's what he came to set up at his coming. But before his second coming, he will endeavor to set up that kingdom church <clears throat> between that coming and the final and the second coming. I <clears throat> uh, hope you think about that deeply. So, I hope you get the point there we are making regarding so in other words, investing such holiness to this building of a tabernacle or base, church, religious base, as the Bible calls it, means that it may just become the headquarters of the mark of the beast system, but one location he goes on to say, inspiration tells us, perhaps Mount Sinai. <coughs> Right? Mount Sinai, which is between the Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea, he chooses it instead of Jerusalem, implies that it is because Palestine as well as Edom, Moab, and Ammon shall escape out of his hand. So yes, <clears throat> those nations escaped, they escaped Britain, escaped Brit Great Britain. But because Great Britain doesn't hold, is still a part of the King of the North, that Great Britain, don't get me wrong, but she's not in the leader in the, um, in the, on the throne, so to speak. America is on the throne. So naturally, some of the things have been fulfilled already. Why? Edom, Moab, and Ammon escaped out of his hands. So the territory is was not under the, the rulership of, <clears throat> of the regime. So his choosing it instead of Jerusalem implies that it is because Palestine as well as Edom, Moab and Ammon, shall escape, that's what the Bible said, out of his hand. He cannot choose it in Palestine area. So the only other place it could be is Mount Sinai. Now there are only two places that this holy mountain could be <clears throat> as we have just said and that is Zion or Mount Sinai. Let's just reiterate that point a bit. Inspiration as designated Mount Sinai, however, just for further clarity, just for further proof, in other words, in the case someone may tell, but may still have some doubt, it is true that both Zion and Sinai are located between the seas, the Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. However, let us look at the statement, <coughs> statement here in Answer Book 591. That's Answer Book 591, it says, and I read. The phrase, the glorious holy mountain, cannot designate the church, for the context of the verse does not support the notion. On the contrary, it clearly shows that the king of the north is to go <clears throat> forth from the glorious land, Palestine, and plant his tabernacles in the glorious holy mountain, while other scriptures show that the Lord is to return to the glorious land and plant his tabernacle in Zion, the holy mountain. So, since both tabernacles cannot be the same in the same place, and since the Lord is to be in Jerusalem, obviously, therefore, the glorious holy mountain, where the king of the north is to plant, his must be 
elsewhere. In other words, then, the Lord is going to have his kingdom there in the Holy Land. Therefore, the king of the north cannot establish his tabernacle there. So, <clears throat> it would have to be another place. It would have to be Mount Sinai. <clears throat> Furthermore, we look at Psalm 68, verse 17, and Exodus 3, verse 1. We notice there that Sinai or Horeb are referred to as the mountain of God. This is Psalm 68, verse 17. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place. Now Exodus 3, verse 1 says, Though no, Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even Oreb. <clears throat> the clear it is, Mount Sinai must be the mountain here referred to in verse 45. So inspiration is definitely correct, most certainly. No question about that. So, and we have evidence here from the Bible and other places now. The question is, has the West planted a tabernacle of their palace there in Mount Sinai? Has the West done that? <clears throat> well, no one really <clears throat> is, no one is really certain which mountain is really the mountain, the common location is at the tip of what is known in general as the Sinai Peninsula. You can notice that on, on a map of the Middle East, you will see right there, near the tip of Mount Sinai, uh, near the tip of the Sinai Peninsula, there probably a spot there marked Mount Sinai. That's the common or general belief, the site of the holy mountain. However, there is credible evidence that it may be located in what was ancient Midian, located on the border of the western Saudi Arabia and the Sinai Peninsula. And there is a place called Asia Eber. You will remember that Moses, while attending to his father-in-law's sheep, in Midian ascended the mountain <clears throat> after seeing a burning bush where God gave him his commission to go and deliver the Hebrews from the, from the Egyptians. So it could be or at least it would appear logical that Mount Sinai could be located in what was Midian. But then there are other theories as well. For example, the most common or the present site, the most popular site, is located again in the Sinai Peninsula. There is a monastery there, uh, <clears throat> the present monastery of Sinai, as it is called, has always been a Christian site, and it dates back to the 4th century AD. Now, whether this is correct or the actual site, God alone knows. The point here, though, is not whether it is the real mountain or not. The truth is that no one really knows the location of Mount Sinai. So, we are unable to clearly identify the tabernacles of his palace. Nonetheless, whether it is or does not alter verse 45 because verse 45 says he will plant his tabernacle the tabernacles of his palace between the seas of the glorious holy mountain and shall come to his end so whether it may be it's 
wherever it may be, it still will show. <clears throat> it will show that he must plant his tabernacle there. So whether it is the present site there in Mount Sinai Peninsula or whether it is Midian, we'll just have to watch and see the unfolding or the fulfillment of this. So these are th some of the things we are looking for. We are looking to see where the West will plant because prophecies are being fulfilled. Prophecies are being fulfilled right before our very eyes. And again, don't let us be like those um, though the Bible says the, in Daniel chapter 12 and we'll get there in a moment too that the righteous shine the righteous shall shine but the wicked are hear, hear, hearing thunder <clears throat> or shall not shine okay Again, the point is that verse 45 could be on its way to fulfillment as we speak. As we speak, verse 45 could be on its way in fulfillment wherein the West is planting the tabernacles of his palace in the glorious holy mountain. Yes, yes. You see, one time we have, so we want to look at the good news if we have time. Let me see what time we have. What is the good news? We are going to stop here. What is the good news as we sum this up? <clears throat> we just go to, we're going to touch that and then we come back to it. <clears throat> what is the good news? Let me put this back up on the screen. Where is it? Come on, what am I sharing? This? No, I'm supposed to be sharing the good news. Okay. What is the good news, brothers and sisters? <clears throat> the good news is found in Daniel chapter 12. And we'll read that, we'll introduce the good news. And then we'll <clears throat> we shall come back to it. Get rid of this cracking. Daniel chapter 12 is where the good news is. <clears throat> because all these are going to be combined. A whole bunch of things are going to be reeling together. <coughs> and no ordinary <coughs> status quo church operation will be able to withstand what is coming up on this world. A whole lot of movements <coughs> A whole spectacular and very, very serious operation is coming on stage before our very eyes. <clears throat> and I hope we can see that. And it's likely that if we keep ignoring this part of our message, the sanctuary, the cleansing of the sanctuary, the purification of the church, and the reestablish of God's kingdom. We ignore that. We're not going to, all we are going to see is, I guess, is darkness. <clears throat> and expect to come out of the darkness and, and reach heaven. But no one that comes through darkness will get to heaven. So might as well we, 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 we pay attention to the light that is shining on our path or that is within our reach. That's, that's the word of God right there. So what's the good news in all of this that we have said? What, what have we said? We have said that 
<clears throat> yes, the West will enter the promised land. Um, communism and capitalism will clash, but there will not be the world power, the future world power. A religious political system will be the future world power. And yes, communism will win um, the war <coughs> eventually, but will not rule. Because as soon as communism win, God would have had his last um, operation, his last exercise, his army, God's army, and God just mesh with what is happening. The world has armies, militaries. God armies is described, army is described in Joel chapter 2. Read it for yourself. And it used the word, <clears throat> a great people and a strong, the gods, and it used the word army right there. Read Joel chapter 2 and you will find that. And it will show you that is after God's people would have re received the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the power after the former and the latter rain outpour, then the power will come <coughs> to his people. And so God's army will be there. God uses, uh, matches what the devil and whoever else, what matches what the world is doing, <coughs> matches that. But he keeps his, his army will be a step ahead of them. And so that's where we want to be. When the Sunday law start, God's people, if the Sunday law start, if you believe that we are going to have this truth and be um, <clears throat> and have this Sunday law as as a problem, then you are well because if we are not ready and sealed before the Sunday law then we have no chance with what is going to be unleashed out of that system. We cannot believe that that system as, as it's, you know, uh, popular, popularly done and, you know, people say they are teaching the Sunday law. When the Sunday, we, it will be over for the church before the Sunday law, let me tell you that. <clears throat> it will be over in, in terms of who will stand, who will be on the Lord's side, or who will not be. <clears throat> By the time the Sunday law come, that part is over. Judgment would have already taken place in God's church. And the decided one would have to oppose the, the Sunday law to rescue God's people. <clears throat> but, and see, this are, that's a part of the good news. The good news is that it's found in Daniel 12, verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up. This is verse two, and chapter 12, just um, following up at chapter 11. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which stand up for the children of Israel children of thy people, there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Yes. So both in the church and in the world, Yes, <clears throat> both in God's church and in the world, those who would have chosen to have their names in the book of life, the church will be sealed in order that they will accept and receive those who will be coming in. It's no different from the Pentecost of the early church. Same thing. They do their due diligence and get the seal, get the Holy Spirit of God. Then they were able to go and work with the world. <clears throat> That's why they couldn't go and work with the world. Starting at Jerusalem as they did, 
They couldn't work, do that work before the upper room experience. The upper room experience will be realized in the kingdom, in Palestine, in the promised land. <clears throat> this is not a fairy tale. <clears throat> but I know it sounds strange and many dismiss it. Many believe that God is going to come and we are going to pop up out of this corrupted earth and meet him in the air um, somewhere, somehow. Not going to happen because it's not written. <clears throat> so thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found in the book. So, although the United States and our allies is going to fall in the, a massive war, but it is at that time, at the time when she is coming to his end, when the king of the north is being punished, as it were, that Jesus will stand up and deliver everyone who has overcome. And through the power of our Lord, and, the cons and consequently will have their names etched in the book of life. <clears throat> All right. That's where we're going to stop. We're going to look. Certainly, this will be 144,000. You and I, if we are faithful, can be a part of this deliverance. And we will need that deliverance. I guarantee you that. Certainly later, it will be a great multitude. In other words, deliverance of Daniel 12, 1 starts with 144,000 at the time of Ezekiel 9. It means, brothers and sisters, as we have seen, that God's people will be delivered during or at a time of great war, the greatest of all wars, which will be centered in the promised land. <clears throat> All right, we're going to stop here. We'll pick up the good news and repeat that next time. So God bless you. Happy Sabbath. Enjoy Sabbath school. And um, share the word <clears throat> with somebody. Oh, may the saving grace for Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to the love of God the Father, full fellowship and the communion of the Holy Spirit, the comfort to rest, remain and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. May the grace and peace of the Lord abide with you always. Take care. <coughs>